Hi, welcome to this video scribe on psychology in extreme environments. Putting humans on the surface of the moon was as much a psychological challenge as a physical one. In this short insight, we're going to explore the psychology of astronauts and what it means to have the right stuff. Our focus is going to be on the intrepid travellers who have ventured and continue to venture out of this world. Over the years, there's been a great deal of interest in understanding the personality and background characteristics of astronauts. Questions are focused on who these people are, why we would pick them for these exciting and risky missions, and are they in fact superheroes? Well, the author Tom Wolfe took it upon himself to find out, and in 1979, after years of interviewing astronauts, their family members, and those involved in the space programme, published his now famous book, The Right Stuff. The Right Stuff focused on the Mercury-era astronauts, whose backgrounds as fighter and test pilots in the US Navy and Air Force made them popular candidates for human spaceflight. After studying these stoic American heroes, Wolf concluded that they were indeed highly motivated and achievement-focused, very confident and assertive, but could also be dogmatic and competitive, perhaps in keeping with their fighter pilot background. Canadian astronaut Commander Chris Hadfield has since reflected on the different requirements between those early astronauts and those that are likely be to be selected today. He said in the shuttle era, NASA wanted people who could operate the most complicated vehicle in the world for short stints. Today, NASA looks for people who can be locked in a tin can for six months and excel. A certain personality type that was perfectly acceptable, even stereotypical in the past, the real hard assay, is not wanted on the voyage when it's going to be a long one. I mean, think about it. Would you want to spend six months in a tin can with someone you didn't like? Over time, there was a reformulation of the characteristics desirable for human spaceflight. This fed into a new right stuff profile that reflected the type of mission being completed and the way that astronauts had to work together. In 1990, at a meeting of space programs and technology hosted by the AIAA, the psychologists Janet Spence and Robert Helmreich presented their work, now referred to as the Spence-Helmreich model. The personality model that they developed helped space agencies during their selection processes to down-select from large candidate pools to a more manageable number of possible astronauts. Within the spence helmreich model, there are two overarching factors. The first is instrumentality, which represents achievement motivation and goal orientation, and includes things like mastery and competitiveness. The second is expressivity, which is related to interpersonal attitudes and behaviours, and includes the ability to cooperate, styles of communication, and how aggressive someone is. These factors have been represented in a more modern reformulation which groups different traits together to identify who might make a good astronaut. As a result of research on trait clusters, three different types of candidates have been identified. Those with the right stuff are goal orientated, can co cooperate with other people and are effective communicators. The wrong stuff is someone who's goal focused but can be competitive and can be gregarious. And unfortunately, someone with no stuff is completely lacking in motivation and not able to work with others. These combinations of personalities have been studied in astronaut populations. In 2004, David Musson and Gro Sandal published research examining how the right stuff profile could be used during selection. Their paper titled Personality Characteristics and Trait Clusters in Final State Astronaut Selection offers an insight into NASA's selection process and the role of personality within that process. Their findings highlighted that the right stuff profile did distinguish between candidates who made it to the final stages of selection versus more general public. However, there was no difference between the profiles of those who were eventually selected versus those who weren't, highlighting that personality can only tell us so much. Moving into the present day, and the attention of space agencies has shifted to long duration missions and a potential mission to Mars. Other personality models are now more popular than the Spence Helmreich Right Stuff model. However, it will rightly claim its place in the history of human spaceflight. The model has contributed to advancing selection processes and understanding of astronaut personality and will have played its part in any future mission to Mars. Thank you very much for watching this video. This was a short video scribe on psychology, astronauts and extreme environments by InExtremis. If you're interested in knowing more about psychology in extreme settings, visit us at inextremis.teachable.com.